about their artificial intelligence chip. We, we saw the specs. And our analyst, James Wang, came from NVIDIA. That's what they're replacing. And he said, oh my goodness. Uh, and they're at least three, if not four years ahead of the competition. I was hired in February of 2016. I asked Elon if he was willing to spend all the money it takes to do full custom system design. And he said, well, uh, are we going to win? And I said, well, yeah, of course. So he said, I'm in. And uh, so that got us started. We hired a bunch of people and, and started thinking about what a, full, uh, what a custom design chip for full autonomy would look like. We spent 18 months uh, doing the design and then August of 2017, we released the design for manufacturing. We got it back in December, it powered up and it actually worked very, very well on the first try. We made a few changes and released a B0 Rev in April of 2018. In July of uh, 2018, uh, the chip was qualified and we started uh, full production of uh, production quality parts. In December of 2018, we had the autonomous driving stack running on the new hardware and we were able to start uh, retrofitting employee cars and testing the hardware and software out in the real world. Uh, just last March, we started shipping uh, the new computer in the Model S and X, and just earlier in April, we started production in Model 3. So th this whole program from the hiring of the first few employees to having it in full production in all three of our cars is just a little over three years and is probably the fastest uh, system development program I've ever been associated with and it really speaks a lot to the advantages of having a tremendous amount of vertical integration um, to allow you to do concurrent engineering and speed up deployment. In terms of goals, uh, we were totally focused exclusively on Tesla requirements and that makes life a lot easier if you have one and only one customer you don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, one of those goals was to keep the power under 100 watts so that we could retrofit the new machine into the existing cars. Um, we also wanted a lower park cost so we could enable full redundancy for safety. At the time, we had a thumb in the wind estimate that it would take at least 50 trillion operations a second of neural network performance to drive a car, and so we wanted to get at least that much and, and really as much as we possibly could. Um, batch size is how many items you operate on at the same time. So, for example, Google's TPU1 has a batch size of 256, and you have to wait around until you have 256 things to process before you can get started. Um, we didn't want to do that, so we designed our machine with a batch size of one, so as soon as an image shows up, we process it immediately to minimize latency, which maximizes safety. Uh, we needed a GPU to run some post-processing. At the time, we were doing quite a lot of that, but we speculated that over time, the amount of post-processing on the GPU would decline as the neural networks got better and better, and, and that has actually come to pass. Um, so we took a, ch a risk by putting a fairly modest GPU in the design, uh, and, and that turned out to be a good bet. Security is super important. If you don't have a secure car, you can't have a safe car. So there's a lot of focus on security and then, of course, safety. There was really no ground-up neural network accelerator in existence in 2016. Everybody out there was adding instructions to their CPU or GPU or DSP to make it better for inference, but nobody was really just doing it uh, natively. Um, so we set out to do that ourselves. And then for other components on the chip, we purchased industry standard uh, IP for CPUs and GPUs. That allowed us to minimize the uh, design time and also the risk uh, to the program. Um, another thing that was a little unexpected when I first arrived was our ability to leverage existing teams at Tesla. Tesla had wonderful power supply design teams, signal integrity analysis, package design, system software, firmware, board designs, and a really good system validation program that we were able to take advantage of to accelerate this program. Here's what it looks like. Uh, over there on the right, you see all the connectors for the video that comes in from our, the eight cameras that are in the car. You can see the two self-driving computers in the middle of the board, and then on the left is the power supply and some control connections. And so I really love it when a solution is boiled down to its barest elements. You have video, computing, and power, and uh, it's uh, straightforward and simple. The, I mean, the general principle here is that it, any part of this could fail and the car will keep driving. So you could have cameras fail, you could have uh, power circuits fail, you could have one of the Tesla full, full self-driving computer chips fail, the car keeps driving. Uh, the probability of, the, of this computer failing is substantially lower than somebody losing consciousness.
That's, that's the key metric, at least in order of magnitude. Once analysts understood how far ahead of the competition they are, whether it's Waymo or Cruise, in terms of autonomy, and how soon it is going to evolve, and the, uh, that they would be able to raise. What happened last week came clear to me is, the analysts following this stock don't know how to analyze it, because it's, it's not a technology stock, it is that. It's not a car company, yes it is. Battery, it's utility, it's, it's something for everyone, and no one can pull it all together. And in terms of performance, we took the narrow camera uh, neural network, which I've been talking about, that has 35 billion operations in it. We ran it on the old hardware as, uh, in a loop as quick as possible, and we delivered 110 frames per second. We took the same data, the same network, uh, compiled it for hardware for the new FSD computer, uh, and using all four accelerators, we can get 2,300 frames per second processed. So a factor of 21. I think this, this is perhaps the most significant slide. It's night and day. I've never worked on a project where the performance increase was more than three. We have set out our research teams. We have broken them out, not by sector, but by innovation platform. So we have a robotics, autonomous vehicles or robots. Energy storage, they will be electric. Artificial intelligence, they will be powered by artificial intelligence. Transportation as a service, we have four analysts collaborating on this. I don't think research departments out there are set up to analyze this stock. The strategy here, and it, this, this started uh, you know, basically three, a little over three years ago, was uh, design and build a computer that is fully op optimized and aiming for full self-driving, then write software that is designed to work specifically on that computer and get the most out of that computer. So you have tailored hardware uh, that, is, that is a master of one trade, self-driving. Um, the NVIDIA is a great company, but they have many customers. And so when, as, as, they, as they apply their resources, they need to uh, do a generalized solution. Um, I, we care about one thing, self-driving. Um, so that it was designed to do that incredibly well. The software is also designed to run on that hardware incredibly well. Uh, and the combination of the software and the hardware, I think, is unbeatable. I think if, if somebody started today and they were really good, they might have something like what we have right now in three years. Um, but in two years, we'll have something, something three times better. The, th the thing that's, I think, a very powerful, sustainable advantage for us is the fleet. Nobody has the fleet. Those weights are constantly being updated and improved uh, based on billions of miles driven. Um, Tesla has a hundred times more cars with uh, the full self-driving hardware than anyone, everyone else combined. Um, you know, we, we have, uh, by the end of this quarter, we'll have 500,000 cars with the, the full eight camera setup, 12 ultrasonics. Um, some of them will still be on hardware too, uh, but we still have the data gathering at both. Um, and then by a year from now, uh, we'll have over a million cars with full self-driving computer hardware, everything. It's just a massive data advantage. It's similar to like, you know how, like the Google search engine has a massive advantage because people use it. And people, the people are programming, effectively program Google with the queries and the results. The, the car is uh, an inference optimized computer uh, we do have a major program at Tesla called Dojo. That's uh, a super powerful training computer. Uh, the goal of Dojo will be to be able to take in vast amounts of data and train at a video level um, and do unsupervised massive training of vast amounts of video with the, the Dojo program, Dojo computer. We're just being like more conservative right now and then as we gain higher and higher confidence, will allow users to select a more aggressive mode. Um, that'll be up to the user. Uh, but in, in the more aggressive modes, in, in trying to merge in traffic, there is a slight, I mean, you, no, matter, no matter how many you, there's a slight chance of like a fender bender, not a serious accident, but you basically will have a choice of, do you wanna have a non-zero chance of, of a fender bender on freeway traffic, which is unfortunately the only way to navigate uh, LA traffic. The car can operate if it's completely disconnected from the, the fleet. Um, it, it just, it, just the, it uploads the, the training that's 
you know, better and better as the fleet, fleet gets better and better. So simply, if you disconnected it from the fleet, from that point onwards, it would stop getting better. Um, but it would still function fine. Essentially, the car is going to do kind of what a human would do. And you can think of a human as like basically uh, a camera on a slow gimbal. Um, and it's quite remarkable that people are able to drive the car in the way that they are. Because if, if, you know, you can't look in all directions at once. The car can literally look in all directions at once with multiple cameras. Um, so uh, humans are able to drive just by sort of, sort of looking this way, looking that way. They're actually stuck in their driver's seat. They can't really get out of the driver's seat. So it's like kind of one camera on a gimbal and is able to drive, a conscientious driver can drive with very high safety. Um, the, the, the cameras in the cars have a better vantage point than, than the person. Um, so they're like up in the, the, up in the B pillar or at, 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 uh, in front of the rear view mirror. Um, they've got, they've re really got a great vantage point. They're all gonna dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mark my words. Um, I should point out that I don't actually super hate LiDAR as much as it may sound, um, but at, at SpaceX, uh, SpaceX Dragon uses LiDAR to navigate to the space station and dock. Not only that, we de SpaceX developed its own LiDAR from scratch to do that, and I spearheaded that effort personally, because in that scenario, LiDAR makes sense. And in cars, it's friggin' stupid. It's expensive and unnecessary. Once you solve vision, it, it's worthless. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. The, we do have a forward radar, which, which is low cost and is helpful, especially for occlusion situations. So if there's like fog or dust or, or you know, snow, the radar can see through that. If you're going to use active photon generation, don't use visible wavelength, because once you, with, with passive optical, you've taken care of all visible wavelength stuff. You want, if you, you, you want to use a wavelength that is occlusion penetrating like radar. So, so LiDAR is just active photon generation in the visual spectrum. If you're going to do active photon generation, do it outside of the visual spectrum in the radar, in the radar spectrum. So like at 3.8 millimeters versus 400, 700 nanometers, you're going to have much better occlusion penetration, um, and that's why we have a forward radar. Um, and then we also have uh, ultras, 12 ultrasonics for, for near field information. Um, in addition to the eight cameras and, and, and the, the forward radar. Um, you only need the radar in the forward direction because that's the only direction you're going real fast. So, so I mean, we've gone over this multiple times, like, are we sure we have the right sensor suite? Should we add anything more? No. Just let's take the electric vehicle, the Model S. 2012 it was launched. Not one of those competitors is anywhere near it. We're seven years later. It is our highest conviction idea for a reason.